and uh, their next game will be a week from tomorrow night in Birmingham as they open Conference USA play against the UAB Blazers. The clock continues to tick on man games, loss to injury, illness, and what have you. 15 of them and counting. Counting uh, last night's ball game, Titus Verhoeven will miss his third straight game tonight with a concussion. Sule Boom did take warm-ups and is in uniform. We'll see if he's able to play. He is not in the starting lineup tonight. Al Hollins did not play last night. He is in uniform. Cam Clardy is here. He missed last night. Zarek Onyema is in uniform. He missed the action here last night. Steve, keys to the game. What are the keys for the Miners to try and get by these Bradley Braves? But guys stepped up last night. You saw more scoring from guys that hadn't prior to that scored. So uh, one of my keys, Tyson, is to get, have some snap on the ball. No stickage. Be enemy, for example. He, he would dribble 15, 20 seconds of the shot clock. Let's get the ball moving. Use those other guys now. you got three or four legitimate scores. Two, one word, health. All right, that's it. And, and the, the third bonus key I'll give you, Tysh, is 71. The number 71. Bradley 0 in 6 when they don't score 71. If they score 71 or over, they're 6 and 0. So let's keep an eye on that number tonight near the end of the game. Keontae Kennedy playing with supreme confidence over the last three games, 66 points, 7 of 13 from beyond the three-point line, 23 of 37 overall, coming off a career-high 27 last night in the victory over North Carolina Central. And that's going to wrap up this edition of the Longhorn Distributing Countdown to Tip-Off Show. Stay tuned. Exciting Miners basketball is next. It's the championship game of the 59th West Star Bank Don Haskins Sun Bowl Invitational. The Miners of the Bradley Braves from Van Wagner. This is UTEP basketball. Get him.
from the Don Haskett Center. Welcome to the fifth meeting of the basketball series. It began back in 1955. It's the Miners and the Missouri Valley Conference Bradley Braves. It's the championship game of the 59th playing the 60th anniversary of the West Star Bank. Don Haskins Sun Bowl Invitational. Bradley knocked off Sam Houston State last night. The Miners got by North Carolina Central. The Braves are 6-6. Six and six. They've won five of their last six. The Miners have won three in a row for the first time this year. They are 7-4 and four this season. The two teams have wrapped up their pregame warm-ups. Sule Boom is with his teammates as they line up along the foul line to our left. The Bradley Braves lining up down to our right. There's the buzzer. The color guard has made its way to the floor. And we'll listen to the color guard make its way onto the surface here at the Don Haskins Center. And then we'll have the singing of our national anthem. Please remain standing and gentlemen, please remove any head here. For the singing of our national anthem by Marlene Mosier. surface here in the Don Haskins Center and then we'll have the introduction of the lineups we will begin with the Bradley Braves out of the Missouri Valley Conference from Peoria Illinois the Braves for head coach Brian Wardle will line up this way they will start Malavi Leons, who is a six feet nine inch junior from the Netherlands, a transfer from Mineral Area College, where he was the NJCAA Player of the Year a season ago. Leons is averaging 11 points, five rebounds a game, and shoots 43% from beyond the three point line. He's third in the valley at blocked shots. Vilay Tavaninen will also start. He made five threes last night. Tavaninen is a 6'4 junior from Finland, and he is averaging seven and a half points and two rebounds per game. Rink Mast is a 6'9 sophomore from the Netherlands. Mast is averaging eight points, his second in the valley, averaging just under nine rebounds per game. 
Connor Hickman is a 6'3 freshman from Bloomington, Indiana. How did he get away from the Hoosiers? Hickman is averaging seven points and shooting 44% from beyond the three-point line. And their leading scorer is Terry Roberts. Roberts is a six foot three inch junior and he is a transfer from Southwestern Florida College, the same college that produced John Dos Anjos, who the Miners signed last month to a national letter of intent. He will join the UTEP program next year. Roberts is fifth in the Valley. He's averaging 16 points. He's fifth in the Valley in assists and fourth in assist to turnover ratio. And again, Brian Wardle seeking his 100th victory tonight is in his seventh year as the Bradley head coach spent five years before that as the head coach at Green Bay when he accepted that job at the age of 30 he was the youngest division one coach in America Miners will utilize their 10th different starting lineup in 12 games and that means that uh, Keontae Kennedy is a six foot six inch sophomore from Austin, Texas, a transfer from Xavier University, 11 points. I check that, 13 points and a team leading six rebounds per game. Jarrell Satterfield at 6'4", a sophomore from Chicago, and a transfer from Ranger Junior College. Six and a half points and a rebound and a half. Kevin Kalu at 6'9", a freshman from Baltimore. Three points, three and a half rebounds. Christian Agnew coming off a of season I 16 last night. 6'2", junior from Detroit, a transfer from North Alabama. Six and a half points, three and a half rebounds. And Jamal Bienemy is second straight game after missing a couple. 6'5", junior from New Orleans, the transfer from Oklahoma. Bienemy, 14 points, two rebounds per game. Our officials are the veteran Tommy Nunez, Johnny Harrington, and Tom Nally. Miners in orange, white, and blue were underway as the Braves win the tap. Attacking the goal to your right, the Miners the goal to your left. Roberts out top to Mass, back to Roberts, left side. Shot is rejected by Bienemy, and Bienemy controls. So Bienemy an early block. Miners attack for the first time. Bienemy comes down the right wing. Bienemy is the Braves are man to man. Bounces along the baseline to Kennedy. Kennedy against Leons. Had the ball slapped away by Leons, and it goes out of bounds along the right baseline. The Miners will throw in 28 seconds into the game. 13 left on the shot clock. The enemy will trigger. Can he get it in? He bounces in right side to Kennedy. Kennedy on the wing to Satterfield, who comes out front. Shot clock inside 10. The enemy crosses over, goes between the legs, comes right side, throws up an off-balance bake around and off. And then it's slammed home on the follow by Keontae Kennedy. What doesn't he do? Miners with a 2-0 lead. Roberts with it out top. Miners are man-to-man. -man. Roberts picks up his dribble. Right corner to Hickman. Comes toward the lane. Turns, falls away, fires, and the game is tied at 2. 58 seconds into the contest. Connor Hickman with the answer. Right, how did he get away from Indiana? All right, here's Biennemi with it. Out top to Satterfield. Right wing Kennedy. Kennedy to the dribble against Roberts. Kennedy out front now to Biennemi. Comes down the left wing with the dribble. Biennemi working against Leons. Out front now to Agnew. Shot clock is at 10. Agnew crosses over. Right side comes toward the lane. Left side scoops one off the window. And down she goes. Nicely done. Christian Agnew with his first two. Miners up 4-2. Roberts with it out top. Now to... Tavaninen, Tavaninen to Mast out front, left side to Roberts. Roberts is going to shoot a three left to the top of the circle, and he buries it. The Braves made 11 threes last night. Bradley has its first lead of the game at 5-4. to four. All right, here's Biennemi on right wing. Biennemi working against Hickman. Biennemi shovels out front to Satterfield, who comes toward the left wing side and flips to Kennedy. Kennedy comes toward the baseline, lobs in low for Kalu. Kalu one-on-one -on -one with Mass. Kalu skips it on right wing to Bienemy. Five on the shot clock. Bienemy baseline now pulls back. Left side to Kennedy with one on the shot clock. He fires. It's an air ball, and it's a shot clock violation. And the ball will come out to the Bradley Braves. Braves leading five to four. It's into Terry Roberts. 
and Roberts starts up. Roberts, the leading scorer for Bradley in his first year with the Braves to Leon. Surround a pick now by Mast is Roberts, and he's knocked down and fouled. Christian Agnew with the first foul of the game. Here comes Sule Boom, 6'3", junior from Oakland, California, transferred to the University of San Francisco, the Miners' top scorer, 21 a game. Jamari Sibley, 6'8", a freshman from Milwaukee, transfer from Georgetown University. So the Miners make two quick substitutions. All right, Bradley, Leons has it. Now Roberts around a pick by Mass, pivots with a dribble, keeps it, and comes head of the key. Right side, falls away at the foul line and fires and knocks it down after pushing off on Sibley. Roberts with five, and the Braves lead it seven to four. Here's Bienemy with it. Bienemy comes right side. Now to Boom. Boom out top to Satterfield. Satterfield on left wing Bienemy. Bienemy out top to Boom. Boom. One on one with Leons, goes around Leons, comes underneath, out top to Sibley. He's got a look from three. The shot is off target, and it's taken by Roberts. Roberts comes up the floor, front court to Hickman. Hickman on right wing. Hickman now to Tavaninen, who has a little trouble with it. Tavaninen working against the enemy. Down the middle to Mast, away from Sibley, and he missed with a foul. Sibley got beat by Mast first step down the middle, and Sibley has his first foul, the second Miners team foul, and Rink Mast will go to the line to shoot a pair. The Braves as a team, 65.5% from the foul line. That's only 10th best in the Missouri Valley. Mast is a 63.5%er, and the first one is no good. Great back door, though, by Mast, the kid from the Netherlands. You're right, beat Sibley on that back door. Mast averaging just under nine rebounds a game. It's the second one, and the Braves scoring the last six points have an eight to four lead. Mast first of the night. Three and a half minutes gone, Sibley with it out top. Sibley left side to Kennedy. Al Hollins comes to the scores table. Boom with it out top, comes right side into the corner. Here's a three ball, the enemy, it's too strong and it's taken by Roberts. Roberts lobs to Mast running the floor. It's deflected away and out of bounds. Last touch by a hustling Sibley. Al Hollins, 6'6", senior from San Francisco. The transfer from Oregon State makes his first appearance. And Ari Boya, a seven foot one inch senior from Cameroon is on the floor wearing number one for the Braves. He's tied for the tallest player in Bradley history. Roberts right side comes toward the head of the key, now back toward the right wing. He pulls up and shoots a three. This one's short, and it's pulled down by Bienemy. Bienemy, four minutes gone, now to Kennedy. Left corner to Boom, he shoots, and he nails a three! Right out of his sick bed. Just like when he came back from the COVID protocol, Tice. He had a great game. Miners now made a three in their last 208 games. It's amazing. Mikey Howell's got it out front. Tavaninen missed the jumper right side. It's taken by Leons in the lane, and Leons turns and scores. Leons is a taller, thinner the enemy from the Netherlands. 10 to 7, Bradley. Leons with his first two. Tavaninen is the only one of the brave starters that has yet to score. Right side, the enemy out top to Boom. Shoot it. Boom comes left side into the lane. Had it blocked, gets it back, had it blocked again. It's taken by Mikey Howell. Comes down the right wing, now to Tavaninen. He shoots a three that doesn't go. It's taken by Boya. Shot blocked and Sibley with another foul. Too big. And too Boya tall. will shoot free throws following the timeout. 15.03 left till the half. 10 to 7 Bradley from Van Wagner and the Oscar Arrieta All-State Agency. This is UTEP basketball. We have a chance if we keep him off the offensive glass. On December 31st, come out and celebrate New Year's Eve after the full winter time and bring in the new year. Good job.
Crosses midcourt and comes down the right wing. The enemy looks for Kalu. Give it to Can't him. find him. Out front to Kennedy. Mikey Howell in the game number five is a 6'3 graduate transfer from the University of California, San Diego. He is from San Diego, the all time assist leader at UC San Diego. Here's a fall away jumper foul line that's way off the mark by Kennedy. And the Braves come the other way. Here's Roberts with it on right wing. Roberts comes toward the lane, left side pass, and hits the official, it would have gone out of bounds. All right, pass now taken by Mikey Howell, out top to Boya, and a cheap foul goes against Kalu, who got there late to challenge. Kalu's got his first foul, it's the fourth team foul. Hickman and Mast return, Boya will leave. Also on the floor for the Braves is Jason Kent, number 20, 6'7", a sophomore from Oak Forest, Illinois. Mikey Howell with it. Howell around a pick by Mast. Howell now to Zach, Zach Montgomery, who missed a runner in the lane, and it's taken by Kennedy. Zach Montgomery is 6'6", freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. Kennedy with it, six minutes gone. Miners trail 10-7. The enemy out front comes down the right wing. The enemy looks for Hollins. Instead out front to Kennedy, drives left side. Baseline comes underneath and missed but a foul. He'll go to the line. Yep, grab the rim. Defensive player grabbed the rim. Zek Montgomery with the first Bradley foul of the game. Kennedy had a career high nine free throw attempts to go along with his career high 27 last night plus a career high three threes. Keontae's first foul shot, no good. Miners are second in Conference USA as a team, 75%. Kennedy, 67.5%. Second one is good for his third point. And the Miners are down 10-8. to eight. Mikey Howell starts up, crosses over. Howell in the middle of the floor, bounces to Mast out top. Now to Kent. Kent comes right side. Kent lost it. It's taken by Bienemy. Here's the lead. Kennedy flying left side to the rack. Shot blocked by Mast. He wanted to dunk, and Mast blocked it. Hickman's got it. Hickman right side, spins. Now to Mast. He shoots a three. He missed the shot, and it's pulled down by Holland. Hell of a block, though, Tyson. A great job by Mast. Now to Bienemy. I think Hickman's got a problem with his ankle. Out front here is Boom. Oh, Boom is hurt. fouled by Montgomery. Yeah, Hickman he's grabbed his right ankle. He is in some pain. Now Montgomery picks up a couple of quick fouls. Hickman being attended to. He grabbed his right ankle. Landed. I thought for a minute it was a cramp, but I'm wondering if he landed on somebody's foot. He did, Hollins. Huh? Landed on Hollins' foot coming off the rebound as often happens in basketball. In cause of injury to the ankle, when you land on some other guy's foot unevenly. You've played, uh, played basketball for any length of time. We've all done it. Well, that's why I beg the kids to wear high top sneakers right. and tape. 
All right, but no, everybody's got to wear the low sneakers. The grips, their ankles. Uh, you, you know, it's kind of a fashion trend. Eventually, they'll go back to the high high tops. Right, Kobe started it all. As a matter of fact, Sule Booms wearing high tops. Sule's the man. Nonconformist. Miners will throw in baseline to the left of the goal, trailing 10 to 8. Pepsi is the official beverage sponsor of UTEP Athletics. Comes in left side to Boom, left of the lane, Kalu, one on one with Mast. Comes into the lane, drop step, up and under, throws one up, foul, Mast. Nice job by Kalu under complete control.
Kennedy. Same five that started the game. Miners with a throw in. Second half is underway. Miners attacking the goal to your right. Braves the goal to your left. That's in front of their benches. And here's the enemy. Left side, Satterfield. Satterfield against the man to man check of Kent. Down the right wing comes Kennedy. Kennedy out front near midcourt to the enemy. Shot clock is at 10. The enemy comes around a pick by Kalu, right side. Stops, skips it on left wing to Satterfield, who comes baseline for the pull up. It's an air ball. And it's knocked out of bounds. And wow. it will go to the Miners with two seconds, though. That's it. Two left on the shot clock. Right. The shot did not hit the rim. Miners inbound to the left of the goal. The enemy brings it to Kennedy, and he scores off the inbounds pass. <laughs> the enemy, a touch pass from the out-of-bounds delivery by the ref. Kennedy has 10. That was genius. First to the Miners in double figures for Keontae. Miners up five. Kent with it, now to Tavaninen. Tavaninen to Mast out front, comes to the dribble. Mast on right wing. Mast out front now to Tavaninen. Left side, Roberts. Roberts comes to the dribble. Roberts against Agnew. Roberts crosses over, comes around Agnew, scoops one up and missed it, but it's tipped in by Rink Mast, the big man. Mast with his first field goal. It's a three-point 35-32 Miners lead. The enemy with it. The enemy left side to Kennedy. Kennedy comes around a pick by Kalu. Kennedy spins in the lane. Kennedy throws up a runner. Foul, Connor Hickman will send Kennedy to the line. Hickman with his first foul of the game. Keontae Kennedy, double figures for a fifth consecutive game. First time in his career, Kennedy has had five straight double figure games. He hits the first one for his 11th point. Well, you love that, Tice, because now he speaks, finally speaks of consistency on the offensive end. You had a chance to visit with his father after the game last night, an engaging fellow. Kennedy missed the second one. Hickman with a rebound. Miners by four. Mikey Howell is back in. He's got it. Howell on right wing. Howell beats the enemy. Scoops one off the window and missed it. Rebound. And it's a foul going to go against the Miners. And it goes against, I think, Kevin Kalu. And he'll be the first Miner with three fouls. And it will be, I think, Mikey Howell going to the line. Yep, he was fouled on the drive to the hole. He'll shoot a pair. Howell's first one on its way, and he rattles it home for his fifth point. Kalu leaves, and Alfred Hollins returns. Minute 34 into the second half. Miners by three. Mikey Howell, left hand's his second one on the way, and that is also good. So it's a two-point ball game. A little full court pressure, man pressure. It comes into the enemy, working against Roberts. The enemy comes to midcourt and crosses over. The enemy veers toward the right wing. Now comes toward the lane, skips it left wing to Agnew into the corner. Satterfield nails a three. He loves the baseline, Jay. Agnew the assist, the good extra pass. Satterfield with eight. Miners up five. Two minutes gone, second half. And we've got a foul, I guess, going against Agnew. I agree with the minor bench, a moving screen by Bradley. Singularly number 20. Kent over on the sideline, very clearly moving screen. Christian Agnew did pick up the foul. It's his second. It's the Miners' second team foul. And it comes into Mikey Howell. Two minutes gone, second half. Miners by five. Howell on left wing. Howell comes around Kennedy, and Kennedy reaches in and fouls him. Keontae Kennedy has his second foul. That's three minor team fouls. Miners had a defensive possession last night where they committed five fouls and one trip down the floor by North Carolina Central. And it still did not turn the game around. Miners came out of that pretty lucky and okay. Roberts inbounds to Mass. Back to Roberts and a screen. Roberts oh, shoots so a good. three and missed it. Left to the top of the circle. Rebound foul. I think it's going to be Mast. Yep. 
Nast has his third. He joins Leon's with three. He's one big man. Third Braves team foul. From the Netherlands. But Minor Biggs are outplaying Nast tonight. Boy, the seven footer replaces him. They just get bigger. All right, here come the Miners. enemy has got it. enemy right side, Kennedy. Kennedy around a pick by Hollins. Kennedy left side. Kennedy left hands it high off the glass, and in she goes. It bounced three or four times on the iron and fell in. Soft touch. Kennedy's got 13. Miners up seven. Left Equals hand. their biggest lead. His offhand as well. Mikey Howell on left wing. Lobs left side intended for Boya. Stolen by Bienemy. Three on three the other way. Bienemy right side into the corner. Kennedy drives toward the lane. His fall away jump shot is in for two. Kennedy's got seven and a half. He's got 15 in the game. Miners up nine. Timeout Bradley. There's a timeout on the floor with exactly 17 minutes left in regulation time. Miners with their biggest lead, 43 to 34. From Van Wagner and the Oscar Arrieta Hall State Agency, this is UTEP basketball. Where was the double foul? Oh, down there. I thought, okay. Kent, Kent, for the for Bradley. I, I, thank you. I knew that was a double foul. Why'd they get the ball out of bounds? On right wing to Roberts, back to Howell. Howell one on one with the enemy. Howell comes left side. Howell now back down the right side against the enemy. Throws up a runner baseline. It doesn't go, and Satterfield's got the ball. Satterfield now to the enemy. The enemy in attacking zone. Braves have gone back to his zone. A two three with Leon's in the middle. It comes left side Agnew. Agnew to Bienemy, now to Agnew. Lobs it underneath, it's not a good pass by Agnew, but it's deflected out of bounds. So it'll stay with the Miners with 12 on the shot clock. Well, there's a rule of thumb for that lob, Tice. Go for the corner of the backboard. Christian did not look like he knew that rule. All right, it comes in right wing to Kennedy, out front now to Agnew. Agnew left wing to be enemy. A long NBA range three short. Rebound out front foul. Bonky Merring. He had Leon's tied up. Bonky Merring with his first foul of the game. It's the fourth Miners team foul. Merring leaves and Al Hollins back on the floor. So the Miners' biggest player is 6'6. Boya is on the bench for the Bradley Braves. Here comes Mikey Howell up the floor. Mikey Howell out top now to Kent. Kent up to Roberts and out front in the middle to Mikey Howell. Howell working against the enemy. Right corner to Roberts. Roberts a one bounce dribble and now pulls up for a three that doesn't go. Al Holland secures the rebound. Oh, bothering Roberts this half. 
The enemy, four minutes gone, second half, comes left side, attacks the rack, into the corner, Satterfield, here comes the three ball, and he hits it! Satterfield with his third three of the game, he's got 11 minors by 12. 46-34, right side, Roberts leans in, throws it up, Kennedy blocks it! And it's out of bounds along the baseline. It will stay with the Braves, and we should have immediate timeout on the floor. 15 and a half minutes left in regulation time. It's the Miners 46 and Bradley 34. From Van Wagner and the Oscar Arrieta All-State Agency, this is UTEP basketball. Was that Kennedy on the block? Yes. Jesus. have outscored the Braves 13 to 4 to open the second half and thus have built their largest lead of the night of 12. Pepsi is the official beverage sponsor of UTEP Athletics. As Bradley gets set to inbound baseline to the right of the goal. All right, it'll come into Mast on right wing. Now to Mikey Howell. Skips it on left wing to Roberts. Roberts pass deflected by the enemy and it goes out of bounds. Miners turn their opponents over 17.7 times per game, which is second best in Conference USA, 28th best nationally. Agnew is out, also Hollins. Boom is back in, along with Merring. Fresh legs. All right, Roberts with it, comes down the middle, now right side, falls away baseline, shoots, and he scores. He's got a pretty shot. Over the best minor defensive player, too in Keontae Kennedy. Roberts with 16. Five minutes gone, second half. Minor lead is 10, 46-36. Boom with it out front, the enemy. They're in a zone, looks like a 2-3. Satterfield, right wing to Kennedy, back to Satterfield. Satterfield to Kennedy on right wing. Corner of the key, right side, Merring. Bonky, nice left pass. wing to the enemy. The enemy comes toward the lane, throws up a high runner under to Merring. I think it was a pass, totally. and Merring scores. The enemy, the assist. What a look. Merring with six. Miners up 48 36. That's one way to beat the zone. Mikey Howell with it. Howell right side. Throws a pass and throws it away. It's taken by Kennedy. Kennedy front court. Kennedy right wing. Kennedy to the middle of the floor. Kennedy with the Miners up by 12. Kennedy around a pick by Merring. Right side to Boom. Sule comes toward the lane. Knocked away by Montgomery. It's loose and it's taken by Bienemy. He comes underneath and he scores with a left hand. <laughs> Lays it in, kisses off the glass. Doesn't go for the dunk. Miners lead it 50 to 36. Their biggest lead. Right corner Montgomery nails a three. Zach Montgomery with his second field goal. He's got five. And it's a 50 to 39 Miners lead. Kennedy now to Bienemy. 13.45 left in regulation. The enemy comes down the right wing side. The enemy right of the lane foul. It's going to be Montgomery over the top of Kennedy who tried to post him to the right of the lane. Montgomery's got his third foul. 
fourth Bradley team foul. Hickman and Tavaninen back in for the Braves. Montgomery and Howell will depart. Deliberate set, Teich, by the Miners. Keontae, not bad, with his back to the basket in the pivot, down in the paint. All right, it comes in left side to Merring, now to Boom. Sule to the dribble, stops. Sule still with it, might have to call a timeout, and he does. Be a 30-second timeout. 30-second timeout taken by the Miners. With 13.32 left in regulation time, that leaves each team with two. Don't forget the Hunt Company's locker room report. And then, minor talk with Sal and with Adrian Broadus. The number to call to talk UTEP basketball is 915-880-5763. But a little bit of business still to transact here in the Don Haskins Center. Miners trying to win their fourth in a row. Jamari Sibley has returned to the floor for UTEP. Miners will inbound in front of our broadcast location, the GECU broadcast table, beside the Miners bench here in the Don Haskins Center. Kennedy will bring it in out front to the enemy. Braves stay in that zone. The enemy out top. The enemy bounces to boom. Five on the shot clock. Right side, Sibley. Sibley with two on the clock. Comes underneath. Banks and he scores! Nice drop step along the baseline. Sibley with his first points of the game. Miners up 52-39. Roberts with it. A three out front. Off balance and he buries it. Wow! Roberts has 19. That is his fourth three. Seven minutes into the second half, Miners by 10. Right side, the enemy and his shot swatted. It comes right side to Sibley. Out front, Merring. Merring shovels now to Boom. Boom around a pick by Merring. Boom out top. He's got a three ball. He missed it. And the rebound taken baseline by Roberts. Roberts out of the backcourt. Roberts right side to Leons, who shoots and nails a three. Three in a row. The Miners got to get in the prevent, three point prevent defense. Leon's first three, he's got five, and Miners take another timeout. It's a 14 point game, minute and a half ago. Apparently the Miners are gonna take a full timeout here which I don't believe is the media timeout, although we'll take it anyway. 12.32 left in regulation. Miners 52, Bradley 45. From Van Wagner and the Oscar Arrieta Allstate Agency, this is UTEP Basketball. Miners with only one timeout left, 12.32 to go. Bradley on a 6-0 run. They made their last four shots from the floor. They've closed to within seven. Not long ago, it was 14, just a minute and a half ago. All right, right side, here's Kennedy with it. 
Kennedy comes around a pick by Satterfield. Kennedy shovels to Agnew. The Braves are back man-to-man. -man. Agnew ahead of the key, crosses over, comes right side, throws up a runner, and will go to the line. Maring tipped it in, it won't count. Yeah, but great job by Maring, following up on the offensive glass, as he did in the first half. The Bradley foul goes to Tavaninen. That's his first, the fifth team foul. Two throws for Agnew. First one on its way, and it, with a little top spin, stays in for his fourth point of the night. Tavaninen, strong player from Finland, but cannot hold Agnew going to the glass. Miners by eight. Miners by nine as Agnew hits a pair. He has five points. 12-10 to go, 54-45. Here's Roberts with it, now to Leons. Leons to Mast. Rink Mast, now to Leons, away from Kennedy. Comes underneath, he's got a layup, and he scores. And also a foul, an ill-advised foul. I don't know who committed that thing, but... Now Christian, but it... That, uh, that cow is out of the barn. You weren't going to stop Leon's there. He's got seven points tonight. Agnew has his third foul. It's the fifth Miners team foul. And now we've got the media timeout. So we'll keep it right here. With exactly 12 minutes left in regulation time and the Miners leading by seven and Leon's about to go to the line. Oscar Arrieta's Allstate Agency is a proud locally owned agency with 24 years of experience and seven area locations helping thousands of families from Fabens to West El Paso. Center of the Buffalo Building on Glory Road for your UTEP basketball tickets. The Braves starting to close in a little bit as you knew they would. Yeah. Three threes in a row, Teich. The mathematics of the three will just kill you if you're hit up by 14, which the miners were at the 15 minute mark, but this one could be the fourth three point play in a row, but it's an and one. As uh, you mentioned, ill-advised foul by Christian Hatton. Leon's trying to complete the and one, and he does so with a foul shot, so that makes it a six-point game. Leon's has six of his eight in this second half. Braves have made their last five shots from the field. Agnew with it now to Satterfield, and out front, Bienemy. They're back in a 2-3 zone. All right, here's Bienemy out front. Bienemy on right wing, Kennedy. Kennedy to Bienemy. The enemy, nice. Corner of the key, right side. Satterfield jumper went in and came out. Tabanainen with a rebound at midcourt to Hickman. Hickman down the right wing through the foul line area. Left side, Leons, and he hits another tray. The Miners have got to get out to that three-point line. Well, the Braves have four threes in the second half. They've got nine in the game, and they've closed to within three, 54-51. Here's Kennedy with it, now to Bienemy. Bienemy at the foul line, Satterfield. Now to Bienemy, Bienemy comes right side, now to Satterfield, left corner, Agnew, pump fakes, 
comes toward Mass, throws one up. It hits the top of the board and will go out to Bradley. Joe Golding's got some words right in front of us. You can probably hear the conversation with the veteran official Tommy Nunez. And it comes into Roberts. Minor lead is three. The Braves on a 6 nothing run. Roberts with it. Roberts around a pick by Mast. Had it taken away. It's loose. Sibley's got it and bounces to enemy. Front court right side Agnew. He's got a three in transition. It didn't go. And it's taken by Roberts. Roberts across midcourt. Roberts left side. Roberts working against Agnew. Around Agnew. Comes underneath. Scoops and he missed it. It's taken by Sibley. Big miss. Now to be enemy. Ten and a half minutes to go. Miners lead by three. Miners have missed their last four shots. Nearly three minutes without a field goal. The enemy at the foul line, Sibley. Sibley, corner of the key, his pull-up jumper, and he hits it. Big shot for Jamari Sibley. Does he always see it hit the time for his shot? He's got four. Miners lead by five, 56-51. Roberts on left wing. Roberts slings it to Leons. He shoots a three. That's off target. He goes straight out of bounds in the right wing corner to the Miners as we're a second past the midway point of this second half. Miners by five. And it comes in to Jamal Bienemy. The enemy makes his way up the floor and now crosses over. The enemy on right wing Kennedy guarded by Hickman. The enemy comes around a pick by Calou who's back in. Kennedy down the middle, attacks Mass, scoops one up, it doesn't go. Rebound Calou into the basket. Leons blocks it and then a foul on Agnew. Four fouls on Agnew. So the sixth minor team foul with 9.39 left in regulation. Agnew will leave and boom, checks back in. Five point minor lead. Mikey Howell back in. He comes up the floor. Howell in attacking zone. Howell out front against the enemy. Howell bounces right side to Leons. Leons. Holds it, comes to the dribble. Leons bounces to Hickman in the lane. Right corner. Here's a three ball. It's missed by Kent. And it's taken baseline by Kalu. Or by Kevin K. Kalu now to the enemy. 9-12 left in regulation. Miners by five. The enemy around a pick by Kalu. The enemy keeps his dribble. Now right wing to Kennedy. Kennedy crosses over, comes toward the lane, had it raked away, and it's taken by Kent. Here come the Braves. The lead to Hickman, flying in right side. Missed a runner. It's taken by Kent. Foul. Kent will go to the line. Braves have the Miners on the run. And Kevin Kalu has his fourth foul. So the foul's starting to pile up. Agnew with four. Now Kalu with four. And going to the line for a pair is Jason Kent. First one on its way is dead center. And it is a four-point ball game. Kent, sophomore from Chicago, is a sweet player. He's going to be a good one. 70% from the line. Got six points. Maring checks in to replace Kalu. One more for Kent with 8.53 left in regulation. And Kent hits them both. So it's a three-point ball game. A little full-court zone pressure. It's a 2-2-1 zone press. The enemy comes to midcourt and crosses over. Keeps his dribble. Now they fall back into that 2-3 zone. Left side, boom with it. Now to Biennemi. Biennemi, right wing to Kennedy. In the middle to Sibley. Sibley attacks the goal. Throws one up and over the front of the rim with a left hand. What a smart, high basketball IQ player he is. I told Sibley today I love his game. He's got six. Right baseline, Montgomery attacks the window and is fouled on his way to the hole by Sibley. He'll go to the line. Sibley has his third foul. They're starting to pile up against the Miners. 18 fouls. And Montgomery will shoot a pair. 
Montgomery is a 50% shooter from the line. He's only tried four. Miners by five. Montgomery's first one is too strong. Holland's back in, and out goes Merring. 8.23 left in regulation. Miners by five. They've led by as many as 14. Montgomery with one more, and that one is good for his sixth point. And it's a 58-54 Miners lead. They set up a half court trap. Now they peel away as the enemy crosses over. The enemy comes right side. They're playing man to man. The enemy out front now to Kennedy. Left side, boom. Boom drives baseline. Boom is run into by Hickman and then he lost the ball out of bounds. A boom turnover. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification from the Don Haskins Center presented by Van Wagner and the Oscar Arrieta All-State Agency. This is UTEP basketball. Here's Leons with it, corner of the key, right side, comes down the left side of the lane, scoops one up and it didn't go, and Kennedy rebounds, didn't draw iron. Oh, the enemy on the D is late father. The enemy in four courts, 7.35 left, comes around a pick by Sibley out front. The enemy in the middle of the floor. The enemy comes right side. The enemy into the corner now to Hollins. Hollins drives into the lane. Hollins had it raked away in a foul. I think it's going to go against Kent. Yep. Who has his fourth, the first of the Braves with four. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 7.22 left in regular. in the paint 26 to 10 as Al Hollins gets set to shoot two Hollins a 78 and a half percent foul shooter first one is good for his third point of the game now comes in fifth year senior settling the minors some very cerebral play Hollins second one is also good so he threads a pair and the Miners are up 60 to 54, 720 to go. Roberts with it now to Lyons. Out front to Roberts. Roberts, we've got a whistle. Injury. And Hickman again. Yep. Yep. And he, I, I wonder if he stepped on somebody's ankle again. No he got mixed up with Sule. Same ankle though. I'm, I think it's just a repeat of that first half injury, sure. 
probably got to retape that first time. Montgomery will replace him. And Howells to inbound. They don't miss much there. Comes into Roberts. Now to Leon's, back to Roberts, around a pick by Mass. Now around another pick by good Mass switch, to Mass. Switch. Pick and roll, it goes right through his hands and out of bounds. The miners are switching one through four, Teich, and it's bothering them. All right, it comes into the enemy with seven minutes to go. Miners with a six point lead in the ball. The enemy out front. The enemy working against Montgomery. The enemy veers right wing, stops in the middle now to Kennedy. Kennedy one-on-one -on -one with Leons, crosses over, comes right side. Kennedy bumped hard, throws one up, and a foul. I think Leons will get it. Yep. Leons has his fourth foul. So each side has two players now with four fouls. Leons with 642 left in regulation. He'll leave, and the other with four fouls. Jason Kent returns. It'll be one-on-one -on -one for Kennedy on the seventh team foul. Huge for the Miners though. Leons has been on fire this half. Kennedy missed the front end though. Miners unable to capitalize. Braves the other way. Right corner. Here's Kent for three and he hits it. Get him back up. Minor lead is cut to three as nobody accounted for Kent who's having a big second half. You gotta find your guy after a missed free throw. Got no 10 excuse. points. None. Boom with it. Left side, Hollins drives baseline, leans in, throws up a bank. It doesn't go, and Kent with a rebound. Now to Roberts. Three point game. Roberts right side. Roberts got a high bounce. Roberts throws up a runner in the lane, around and off, and it's taken by the enemy. The enemy in attacking zone. The enemy down the middle. The enemy all the way. The enemy throws up an air ball. And it's taken by Roberts. Now to Montgomery. Montgomery left side. Montgomery lays it up. He missed it. Didn't draw iron. Miners with a three on two the other way. Kennedy to the rack. Kennedy scoops and missed, but a foul. It's going to go against Powell. Wild and woolly at both ends. <laughs> yeah, but you know, when you get numbers, I think you got to take it. As Keontae did just then. He'll go to the line for two. Mikey Howell with his first foul of the game. It will send it Keontae Kennedy to the line for two shots. And Kennedy is limping a little bit as he heads toward the line. Uh, he'll walk it off. Kennedy has missed his last two free throw attempts, three in all tonight. He's just two out of five. Got to do better than that. And he's missed another one. To me, that's just a lack of concentration. You look like he rushed that one. Yep. Wanted to get it over with. Relax, County. Practice habit. Kennedy's next one is good. He'll leave, and Christian Agnew will replace him. He's got 16 points, does Kennedy. Miners by four with 546 left in regulation. Mikey Howell starts up the floor. Sule got to play some deep. Howell bounces right side to Kent, and now to Roberts. Roberts comes toward the top of the circle. Left corner now to Montgomery. Montgomery to the dribble. Montgomery into the lane. Montgomery throws it up. Scores! Draws the foul. And a chance at an and one as Christian Agnew is just fouled out of the game. Agnew fouls out with five points tonight. With 5.27 left in regulation time. Montgomery has six of his eight points in this second half. It's a two-point ball game. Jarrell Satterfield will replace him. Montgomery with an and one opportunity here. Agnew fouls out for the first time this year. Seventh minor to have a disqualification. The foul shot is missed and Sibley clears it. Miners continue to lead by two. Here's Boom with it. Boom to be enemy. 520 left in regulation. Boom in attacking zone, or rather be enemy. Be enemy. Left side now to Sibley. Sibley to the dribble. One bounce stops. Sibley still with it and then throws it away. It's taken by Roberts. Roberts right side. Roberts baseline. Roberts to Howells. Howell lost it to be enemy. Now Roberts has it. And a timeout taken by Bradley which will leave them with one, with 4.58 left in regulation time. 
Miners have not had a basket now for more than three and a half minutes. Each team with one timeout remaining. 4.58 left in regulation. And the Miners lead the Braves 61 to 59. Boom needs to get more involved. Tice is one for five from the field. Hasn't touched the ball. Five possessions. Sule needs to be part of this offense. Well, you wonder how much I know. energy he has. He looks anemic, but this is it. Crunch time coming. Kevin Kalu has returned to the game. Go, 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 go. Keep good. And now Keontae Kennedy is going to check in at the next stoppage in play. All right, it comes into Howell. Howell out front against Boom. Howell left side to Kent. One-on-one -on -one with Sibley. Rips it on right wing to Mast. He shoots a three, and he hits it, and the Braves have the lead with 4.45 left in regulation. Mast has six points. 10, 11 threes for Bradley tonight. The enemy with it. The enemy. Four and a half to go. Left side is pull-up jumper for two. In and out, and it stays out. And it's taken by Kent. 4.25 left in regulation. Now to Roberts. Miners have gone more than four minutes without a basket. Roberts out front. Roberts comes around a pick by Mast. Roberts left side to the rack. Scoops it up. Scores! And Kevin Kalu fouls him. Roberts has 21 points in the game. And that's it for Kevin Kalu. He fouls out with two free throws in the game. And the Braves lead by three. They are on a 7-0 run. And Roberts with a chance at an and one. And the foul shot doesn't go. The long rebound is loose. Roberts fighting for it. And it's punched out front to Biennemi. Miners came out of that okay. All right, Biennemi, head of the key. Where are the Miners going to get offense? Is it boom? Boom. Yes, he nails a three. He need to get him involved, and he is. Finally, Sule with his first three. First points of the second half for Boom. He's got nine. One. We've got a tie ball game at 64. Love it. Roberts with it out front. Comes left side. Roberts to the rack. Into the right wing corner. Howell. He missed a three. The long rebound. Roberts has it. He's everywhere is Roberts. Roberts against Boom. Comes around a pick by Mast. He's going to shoot a three. He missed it. That's not a good shot. And it's taken by Kennedy. It was not tight, but he's feeling it. He wants to take over this game. 325 left in regulation, tied at 64. The enemy's got it. Sule wants to do so on the other end. The enemy on right wing. Zero against zero. The enemy looks for Kennedy, hits him out front. The Braves are man to man. Pass right side, underneath. Putting it up is Sibley, and he missed. Rebound taken by Mast. Mast to Howell. And Howell comes to the dribble. Three minutes left in regulation. Each team with one timeout remaining. Howell with it. Howell in the middle against the enemy. Howell stops his dribble. Howell left side to Kent. Kent shovels to Montgomery. Montgomery out front. Montgomery one-on-one -on -one with Kennedy. Comes right side. Lost it. Gets it back. Right corner to Howell. He shoots a three. He missed it. Who's going to get the rebound? It's Howell underneath left side. And missing it on a block by Sibley is Kent. And Kennedy has it. Good play by Sibley. 222 left in regulation. The enemy's got it. The enemy in attacking zone. Tied at 64. The enemy in the middle of the floor. The enemy crosses over. The enemy right wing. It's boom. Boom drives baseline. Cut off. Lost it. It's loose baseline. Boom throws it off of Robertson out of bounds with four left on the oh. shot clock. Hard play by Sule. And we've got our final media timeout. 2.04 left in regulation time. Tied at 64.
And it's taken by Roberts. Down he goes, and he's called for traveling. The ball will come back to UTEP. With 158 left, tied at 64. And a reset shot clock to 20. The enemy to inbound. To the right of the goal baseline. Miner's pretty good baseline OB. A shot designed to score, but they got 20 seconds. Can the enemy get it in? We've got a holding. Nope, five second violation. Miners could get it in. They turn it over. Great job by the Braves. Oh, great D by the Bradley Braves. This team is talented. Both sides of the ball. Up the floor comes Roberts. Both teams have gone more than two minutes now without a point. Roberts comes around a pick by Mast. Around another pick by Mast. Roberts to Mast. He's going to shoot a three, and he buries it. Mast has hit two threes down the stretch. He's got seven of his eight, eight of his nine points in the second half. Miners down by three. 90 seconds left, 67-64. Boom with it out front. Boom against Leons. Boom crosses over. Leons knocks it away. Booms dives on it. And Boom is fouled by Leons. Check that. He is fouled by Montgomery. And Montgomery has his fourth foul. Not a smart foul by Montgomery. He is Boone on the floor. Hey, what do we do on Sue is on the floor. 121 left in regulation time. It's the ninth Bradley team foul, which means it's only one and one for Boone, not two. Hey! Still one of the top free throw shooters in the country. Earns the bonus hitting the front end, and he's in double figures for the 21st consecutive game. Is Sule Boom. He has 10 points. Went over a thousand the last game he played against McNeese State. Boom hits both foul shots. It's back to a one-point game. 67-66. Here comes Roberts up the floor. Minute 15 to go. Roberts now to Leons. Leons skips it right side. Mast is going to shoot another three. This one doesn't go, and Kennedy's got the rebound. Here come the Miners. Just over a minute to go. Kennedy left side. Boom. He shoots a three. He missed the iron. It's taken off the window by Montgomery. Less than a minute left. Miners are going to have to get another stop. They're down by one. Roberts with it. Roberts in the middle, they spread it out. Roberts comes around, Kennedy down the middle. He's got a layup and he scores. Miners didn't get the ball stopped. 69-66, timeout Miners. Their last timeout of the game. Roberts just went right around the Miners. He's got nine points in the half, 23 in the game. As we scramble to fill out our ballots, don't we? Um, yes, we do, Taisha. I'm waiting for the outcome to see who can perform under well, the course. lights the last 40 ticks. Have you got two ballots? I do. I got yours right here. I've been filling it in for you, but we'll see. Um, Ryan Mast, the 6'10 kid from the Netherlands, is much better than this 6 of 35, 17% from three. Has thus far showed this year, he's obviously much better than that. He's the nail. Miners now out of timeouts. Bradley has one. Each team is in the double bonus. And Bradley leads by three. Trying for the West Star Bank Don Askins Sun Bowl Championship as Al Holland's inbound. And it comes in backcourt to the enemy. Exit out by Golding on the side. The enemy comes down the right wing. He got? The enemy around a pick by Hollins. The enemy right yep. wing to Kennedy. Yep. He's going to yep. shoot a three. He missed it. And the rebound tipped into the corner, taken by Roberts. He's fouled by Sule Boom. Nicely drawn up play, though. Had Boom. a nice open look. Has his first foul of the game. For the Miners, they've given up 12 threes tonight. The previous high they had allowed was eight in the first two games of the season. And they have surrendered 12 in the ball game tonight. Roberts' free throw is good, and it's a four-point game, a two-possession game. Don't forget the Hunt Company's locker room report. And then Miner talk immediately following our play-by-play -play coverage. 
70 to 66 and still 70 to 66 as Kennedy rebounds. 25 seconds left, Miners down four, and the pass is thrown out of bounds by Kennedy. And Bradley will inbound with 20.4 seconds left in regulation time. All right, it comes in now to Howell. Howell is fouled by Kennedy with 16.3 seconds left in regulation time. Seventy to sixty-six, Bradley with the lead, and it's gone awfully quiet in here now. Kennedy has his third foul. Two throws for Howell. Three of four at the line tonight. Left hand's the first one up, and it rolls around and off. Miners had a 14-point lead six minutes into the second half. But give the Bradley Braves credit. They are playing outstanding basketball. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the Valley. Howell hits the second one. So it's a 71 to 66. Mine is completed. Five point lead. All right, it comes in to Boom. Boom front court. Boom left side to Kennedy. Kennedy into the corner. Sibley is going to shoot a three. And he missed it. Rebound taken by Roberts and a foul. With 5.9 seconds left, Jamal Bienemy commits his second personal foul. And to the other end we will go. And Roberts, who no doubt would be the favorite to win the Tournament Most Valuable Player Award, Terry Roberts, a transfer from Florida Southwestern State, the leading newcomer scorer in the Missouri Valley, hits the first one. Roberts with 25 points tonight. Second one is good. He had 23 last night. 73-66. The enemy comes toward midcourt. Now to Boom. Boom comes left side toward the rack. Banks it up and missed it at the buzzer. Final score, the Bradley Braves, the champions of this 60th anniversary West Star Bank Don Haskett Sun Bowl Invitational. The final was Bradley 73 and the Miners 66. Final scoring totals in the Hunt Company's locker room report when we come back from Van Wagner and the Oscar Arrieta All-State Agency. This is UTEP Basketball.
George, cut, cut it, big guy. George, cut it. Gathering at midcourt is West Star Don Haskins, Sumble Invitational Chairman, Victor Salazar. George, cut it, we're done. Joining him are the executive committee members as well as the captains for each team host committee. Fernie Aceves for North Carolina Central, Patrick Espinosa for Bradley, Tamara Gladkowski for Sam Houston, and Abel Rodriguez for UTEP. Uh, joining these key members of this year's basketball committee are the 2021 Sunquee, Jaylene Plasencia, Sunbowl Association Executive Director, Bernie Olivas, and Sunbowl Association President, Natalia Flores Zasadi. And here to help with the trophy pres presentation from West Star Bank is David Osborne, President and Chief Operating Officer, and Burke Blackchar, the retired West Star Executive, as well as Steve Haskins from the Haskins family. Although basketball is a team sport, individuals rise to the occasion and excel within the framework of their teams. We want to recognize four such performances. Voted to the all-tournament team are from North Carolina Central, number 44, Randy Miller, Jr. From Sam Houston, number one, Savion Flag. Okay, yeah, keep it available because we'll come back to it. From Bradley on on the all tournament team, number fourteen, Man Levy Leon. And from UTEP, number three, Keontae Kennedy. <laughs> We'd like to thank Randy Miller also from North Carolina Central. He's number 44. He was getting ready to go. So congratulations, Randy Miller, Jr. In memory of Don Haskins, a tournament trophy has been created that is, rep is presented to the player who best exemplifies the characteristics most valued by Coach Haskins. Presenting the Haskins Award is their son, Steve Haskins. Tonight's award winner is from UTEP, number 23, player named Jarrell Satterfield. Congratulations, Jerome. And now the winner of the Barry Coburn Most Valuable Player Trophy is from Bradley. He wears the number zero, Terry Roberts. Presenting uh, the tournament championship trophy is David Osborne of West Star, as well as Burt Blankshire and uh, Victor Salazar, our tournament chairman. We'd like to congratulate the Braves of Bradley, the winners of the 60th anniversary West Star Don Haskins Invitational.
have some. Are you done? One more, and then I'll. Ladies and gentlemen, West Star and the Sun Bowl Association extends its most profound thanks for your attendance at this year's tournament. Thanks also to all the fine El Paso businesses that contributed in their own way to making this such a successful event. <laughs> Make plans to join us next year for the 61st anniversary of the West Star Don Haskins Sun Bowl Invitational. Thank you to the UTEP Alumni Pep Band, greatest... Alumni band in the country.